This is Ben with ITNH. In this video, I'm going to show you some quick ways to edit your white so it's more acceptable to things like Rasterlink and other RIP softwares for doing automatic backings. First, we'll look at a vector format. In this case, just a simple logo. If we were to print this in Rasterlink with a valid pixel or other softwares that will generate white or other special colors behind CMYK data, it would leave this white as blank space. So that means the quickest method here, instead of going through color replacements or making secondary files, is to just edit the white. The easiest way here is to bring up your color selections, and we're going to turn it into a 2% color uh, so it has some color data. I like to use cyan most of the time. So simply by doing this, we've now changed the CMYK color data to have something. If we were to bring this in and print it now, it will think there's a cyan there, but with only 2%, it'll never be noticeable to the naked eye when you're printing. Next, let's look at a raster file embedded inside a vector environment say a layout or a frame around a photo. Obviously, there's a lot of pure white inside of this area here with this nice little image of a sky. Now, if we were to do a flood coat of white, it would obviously work, but maybe we don't want white over here due to the material we're using. We just want to back this sky with white since obviously it'll have a lot of blank holes. Now, since we can't edit the raster graphic inside this part of the software, a quick solution can be to create a small shape on top of it and use a reduced transparency. Let's take a look. We're going to start by drawing a shape, just as an example here, to match the photo. In this case, I'm just using the pen tool to draw around the outside of it. Now we've made a shape. Making sure we have a fill on the shape of some sort of color. In this case, let's go with cyan again. But instead of 2%, we're going to go with 100%. Then we reduce the opacity down to 2%, making it work like a film. Now there's a very subtle amount of cyan covering all those white highlights in the form of a transparent layer. Now when you go and do something like the valid pixel print, you'll get white backing this part of the image. Next, let's look at a raster graphic. In this case, a logo with a white circle on a transparent background. Of course, right now, if you were to generate white behind your color, it would just be behind the IT here and the bit of the word at the bottom, not the circle. Now, the easy way around this, in case of this software at least, is to simply clip the levels of the white. To do this, we're going to go up to Image, Adjustments, and Levels, or Control-L. This will bring up this nice panel here, and you can see your output levels at the bottom. If we adjust this 255 down to 253, it means it has adjusted the overall white output capable in this file down to the 253 threshold, which is an RGB term, but it will still clip that white so it's no longer a pure white. It has a 1 or 2 percent color value linked to it. But now you'll be able to print this just the way you wanted to with a valid pixel backer. Now you might have noticed this whole time we've been using Adobe products, in this case Photoshop and Illustrator. Uh, similar features are available in other softwares such as Corel, uh, GIMP, Inkscape, etc. Uh, some of the terminology might be a little bit different, but the features are kind of the same and you should have similar results.